Welcome to the DTF Film Session number 29. We are back with Shane Carter at Shane Carter TX on Twitter to talk about more tight ends. Favorite position to evaluate for Shane? Find me on Twitter at TheMaxDean. And it's Dalton Kincaid today. So we've talked about Darnell Washington, who's my favorite guy. We've had we've talked about uh, Michael Mayer, who's Shane's tight end one. I don't know if he's his favorite guy, uh, but today we're back with Dalton Kincaid from Utah, who is essentially a big slot, big wide receiver, in my opinion. I think what he brings to the table as a blocker is essentially non-existent, um, and uh, he's a really fantastic athlete. So. Um, interesting breakdown. I, I definitely understand why people get real excited about him, but it's a flavor thing as it always is with tight ends. Shane, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. As I always love talking tight ends, as you said, and today we're going to get into a lot. Uh, what a lot of people think is considered to be the best tight end in the draft, um, and there there are reasons why, and I'm excited to see why. Yeah, for sure. So for me, he's at three. Uh, I know for Kyron, he's at one. The playmaking ability is very much there. Um, but you know, he's six, four, two forty six, So he has requisite tight end size. I think, you know, if you asked a scouting department, what is prototype tight end? It's six, five, two fifty, Right. But I think six, four, two forty six is very near the measurables that you're looking for. Um, and I think he has the frame to put on a little bit of weight and strength. If even if necessary at the next level, because honestly, he's going to need to, if you want him to block at all, but He's got the size, he's got the height, he's got the wingspan, and the playmaking ability is really what sells you on this guy because he can run downfield, he can go up and catch the ball. He, you know, if you watched, I for if you watch, what was it the the USC game? I think if you yeah. if you it's he absolutely goes off. If you just watched that, you'd be like, oh my god, this guy is incredible, and he's good. Um, but we'll see here against Florida and that there are a couple of things that make him kind of a specific role fit. Um, and that that's not necessarily a bad thing, but where you draft him definitely depends on who you, who you are. So, you know, what are your favorite things about Kincaid before we jump in here? He might be the best vertical threat tight end in this draft. It's just, mm-hmm. we talk, everyone talks about his athleticism, his ability as a, as a downfield receiver. And that's what's got people talking as, as a uh, as a first round tight end is because he's so good as a receiver, but he has the size mm-hmm. of a tight end. And with in today's NFL, where tight ends are being used more and more in the slot, as well as like sort of like a sub Z X receiver on the outside, the danger being used as simple inline blocking tight ends or or as a, or as H or an H backs or even like the sort of like uh, what some people used to re- refer to as an F, which is basically the guy right behind the tight end one who can. Uh, who can split out or even be used as like a fullback type. They're being used as legit outside weapons. And Dalton Kincaid might be the most refined at that. Well, he's certainly the most dangerous at that. I can, I can definitely say, all right, so let's jump in here and take a look. All right. So we're here against Florida. So he's in line here. Um. Okay. So, it, this isn't fantastic blocking here either um, because this guy is significantly smaller than him that he's going up against and he's able to disengage. Now, in this particular case, it's not really impactful to the play because he's able to get in the way effectively. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the running back's not really going in that direction anyway, so there's enough time. But, like, you'd like to see him sustain a block a little bit longer, especially against a, a significantly smaller player. Um, he doesn't punch at all. He comes in just like, I'm bigger than you, so I'm just going to try and grab, you know, basically your shoulder pads, kind of hug you. But he's able to throw him off of him pretty easily. Um, that's so funny because on the last the last one, I was like, you know what? He looks, he looks small. And I was like, it doesn't make sense. But, yeah. That's because 80 is a lot smaller. Um, all right. So, uh, you know, what's your take on this play here? Well, like you said, because he's setting it on an edge block, he really just has to get in the way of the, of the defender on the outside because it's really the, it's really the outside tight end's job to have the secure block on the pull. 
we, um, the the uh, the running back is supposed to go through the a gap. That gap is, is already closed off because the edge rusher is right in his face. But Kincaid, his job is simply just to get in front of. It looks like it might be a down safety, possibly a few outside linebacker. It's hard to tell from this angle. But mm-hmm. in any case, yeah, he does get the block shed pretty quickly. As a matter of fact, of it and. And that's and that's one thing that I do have an issue with is that even though he can do he, his best block is as an edge setter, he does have a lot a tendency of getting his block shed. And even though this play really had no bearing on him as a blocker, that's still something that has popped up from time to time if you watch his tape. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just all about translating to the next level. Like you've got to take the process over the result there. So just because the play, like his that the the loss of the rep per se didn't necessarily in fact impact the play and he was in the way long enough for it to succeed you can't look at that and be like okay we can rely on him as any kind of lead blocker we can't rely on him certainly against a player who's bigger than a safety to sure. um you know get in the way there so so for this play he's um he's not in line but he's split out in the slot close he's pretty tight um and he is going to run a little little dig route here Mm-hmm. And the reason I included it, even though he doesn't get the ball, is because um, it shows a couple of things. One, the safety, mm-hmm. the deep safety, is very respectful of his speed. Um, and he creates separation for himself exclusively due to the fact that they are already aware of the fact that he can run past them. Mm-hmm. I, love then, his, I love his footwork when he stops. A, a little one, two, and in. A lot of times yeah. you see lighter receivers do that with ease. Heavier guys like him or approaching 250 pounds are going to have a lot hard time doing that, not being heavy footed. He does it. Uh, looks like just like almost like he's like almost like he's floating. Really, mm-hmm. really nice cut inside. You can't you, you can't under, you can't understate that. Right, for sure. At his size, that that's impressive. Um, the, the the one issue with him is that a lot of his routes are very undeveloped where he's either just catching the ball in the flat or just like like go routes or whatever where where he's just not asked to really incorporate a lot of footwork and he's just supposed to go out and make a play so i wanted to include this even though he doesn't get the ball because i wanted uh, to show something that i believe will translate to more developed route tree at the next level sure so we don't have to spend a lot more time on it I do like how how he kind of veers inside from uh, from from the edge rusher, so so mm-hmm. he allows his fellow tight end to, to to pick him up, and he doesn't fall he doesn't fall into that trap of getting pushed off his route. That's good awareness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and also as he moves outside a little bit, mm-hmm. he's keeping the outside corner who's in zone coverage there from drifting inwards on him too much as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Now we've got him again in the slot, this time on the right side. So he's on the line of scrimmage. And um, it's an interesting, you know, it's a, a pretty normal formation, but where you've got both receivers off the line on mm-hmm. either side. Um, <clears throat> so I actually like this right now just because we're about to see him go against Trey Dean, one of the better safeties mm-hmm. in this class, too. So this is this the the contact here is a little bit down the field, um, and so you know you have to be aware of that. Mm-hmm. Not not technically legal from a, uh, <laughs> from from a rules perspective, uh, but the the thing is this the reason I picked out this play is because this is what I talked about when I talked about certain players having a really good feel for the space of this, the, uh, the leverage of, of DBs. Mm-hmm. So he has leverage to the inside. The, the DB does, right? Yes. So he's kind of shuffling. What I would want to see from Kincaid in this situation is a more aggressive push down the field to the inside. Sure. 
and a more natural feel for when to break out. Because at this point, it kind of gives he kind of shows the route before he actually separates. Yeah, right, right exactly. about the right about the nineteen yard line. He's already cutting outside, and that allows the the safety to reass to reassess his feet. Mm-hmm. And even though Kincaid's able to make a decent amount of separation right there, and enough to where he can make a play on the ball, he mm-hmm. does he does kind of give himself uh, give himself away a little bit too early. You're right. He he, he starts to come inside about three or four yards early. And that and what would have been what would have been probably wide open allows the safety to uh to st- to stay in coverage. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, there's an art to running a go go route or a seam seam route or whatever you want to call it. Um, in this case, and you've got to put a guy off balance, especially because as athletic as Kincaid is, the safety is probably a better overall athlete in space just due to the fact that he is smaller. So the speed is there. The playmaking ability is there again. Like you don't need me to show you that. Just go on, go put on some highlights. You'll see everything you need to see in terms of how well he can go up and catch the ball. But um, if, if you want him to, consistently win rounds it's gonna take a little bit of time if you're not formulating stuff for him that has him just open by default because that'll be where he does the most damage early in his career mm-hmm. all right so again on the line um split left this time again so you'll see they don't have him in line a whole heck of a lot just because it you know, they had him in line, but it's just I, I didn't want to put clip over after clip of him getting beat in pass protection or in blocking. So, yeah. Um, but Utah does like to run a lot of three, four receiver looks. So mm-hmm. they, they've kind of adapted to this new spread offense mentality. So you wouldn't be surprised if you see him a lot more off the line of scrimmage anyway. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't get the ball here. But Yeah, but, but as soon as he breaks past that linebacker, the safety's already back. He's already won the route. Mhm. Yeah, I mean, it's like we said before for the other one. Look how far back he's dropping. How much space he's giving him. Mhm. So he can run This is what? This is about like an 11-yard um and the safety is eight yards off of him mm-hmm. when he makes the cut. It's purely due to the, to the risk of his speed downfield. And again, you look at the footwork. It's not quite as good. You still see quick feet. It's not quite as fluid though, right? So when he begins his break, so this is a break step. So one two, three. So, one, two, three. And then it's the fourth step where he's really, like, getting out into the break. In that much space, it doesn't matter that much. But we're just, we're really looking for stuff that, that is, that needs to, we need to expect to translate. All right. So here he is split out. So he's the only receiver. He's an ISO receiver on the left side, still relatively tight in his split on the line. And this is just fluidity, right? This gives you a chance to just see how comfortably he is turning, catching the ball. In space with his hands turning up field, this is this is just athleticism right here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like like you said, real crisp route. That his footwork might be, if not his best attribute, definitely his most uh, 
is most tra- is most transcendent just because that's one thing that will really help at the next level is because as soon as he t- cuts into that route, he's already won it. He he doesn't he doesn't really give away the route too early. He does he does just enough to give to give himself leverage, and he's already got enough space off the guy. That as soon as he makes that cut, that he's it, it's he's he's already open, right there. And again, they're giving him a lot of space. Mm-hmm. They have to because because as a. Um, as, like I said, as vertical as, as vertical as fast as he is, he has shown the ability to break tackles on on defensive backs who don't have the developed tackling ability. And when you have a guy that size and space who's able to gain full speed, it's very hard to bring him down. Yeah. So, honestly, for people who really really like him, I could understand why they might say something like. You know, I didn't include enough plays of his highlights and stuff like that, um, which I understand. But the reality is that, like, not every defense is going to just give him the opportunity to 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 do that, and so he's going to have to prove how he can win when the expectation is him getting the ball right. And mm-hmm. so, there are a lot of really positive attributes that he has. It's the speed, it's the fluidity, it's the hands. I also could have included so, so, so many plays of him just being pretty much non-impactful at all whatsoever as a blocker. So like, we really truly have to just decide up front that that is not going to be something that we rely on him for, at least for quite a while. And so you've got to have a role carved out where he is exclusively a receiver, which some teams do. I mean, you know, he can be Jimmy Graham. We talked about it. He can be that kind of guy, but you've got to dedicate that role to him for your offense. Um, I think that the route running is good on on some levels, but when he has to win one-on-one, he can go up and get the ball and win that way. But in terms of creating separation in condensed areas that I'm not as high on him for. So that's, you know, where he's not, where he's not winning the go route by, you know, selling one way effectively and then, and then, you know, breaking outside. So he's my tight end three. And we're going to do my tight end two here in a minute, because I think that the, the skills for him are, special but also not quickly translatable if that makes sense Don Kane is actually my tight end four but we're going to see my also tight end two soon uh I love his vertical threat ability because like you know mm-hmm. like you said you, you didn't want to put uh, too many of his highlights in there you want to put like a lot more of these realistic play-by-play type of plays in mm-hmm. there it's just because and you, we don't get to see it he has that explosive playmaking ability that makes him such a high upside player as a receiver like you said, he ain't gonna be a great inline blocker. He's a decent edge setter. He ain't mm-hmm. gonna be a great inline blocker. But I don't. Not many teams ask their tight ends to inline block all that much unless they have a tackle pulling, which no. I mean, which will only happen like once every like 20, 25 plays. Mm-hmm. As but if he split out to the slot, he is special. He's a special kind of talent. He's he is like I don't want to say he's a fine route runner, but he knows how to create separation. He's he's very much mm-hmm. aware. He's very he has very much. I think he has like. If not great special uh, spatial awareness, he has like he has the, the the concept down to where he knows where the ball is need, is gonna be, where he needs to cut in, and he has the bounce on his toes to to make something happen. I haven't tied in four just because I don't think he's out, he's not a developed blocker, and 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 as a rookie tight end, you're gonna be asked to block a lot. Uh, I think whoever drafts him will know that his best attribute is gonna be as a playmaker and as a receiver, and more likely we'll see him playing the slot more than anything else. Mm-hmm. But I have a second round grade on him, only because because he's an undeveloped uh, uh, undeveloped blocker. Excuse me, but he's such a threat as a receiver that I can't put him uh, past the day two. Yeah, he's also a, a second round pick for me. I would say his strengths, if you want to break them down to like you know uh, check boxes, it's balance, it's. Um, speed 
and it's the ability to go up and and make plays with the ball in the air. That is a we didn't see that really here, but that is something he does very very well. Right. Um, I don't know that uh, fluidity would be the last one, which is kind of tied into balance. But sure. I don't I don't see tremendous spatial awareness. Um, I don't think I see tremendous spatial awareness from blocking, even in his blocking or in his route running where he where he's not given space because a lot of a lot of his separation is specifically due to the fact that he's heavily respected as a deep threat and on some level that will continue um but some guys are going to get in his face more and i just haven't seen him win those aside from going up and um you know mossing guys essentially and i i think honestly even as an edge setter like i still felt like there's a lot to be desired there um you know, like I said, you see him do it against defensive ends or true outside linebackers. It's it's not pretty. I mean, he was already kind of thrown off by the um, by a much smaller. I think that was a safety coming down. And even if it was a linebacker, we're talking about like a linebacker who's not significantly over two hundred pounds. So uh, you know, he's a very unique player, very specific, um, but he could be a, a massive threat for you if you make that investment. So. Um, I'm really excited to get to the next guy too, because he exhibits not quite the same size, maybe not quite the same speed, but he does have some of the things that I like even more in a receiving tight end. So, all right, you can find me at the Maxine. You can find Shane at Shane Carter TX. Define takes football is at Define takes on all social media outlets. You can check out our written content at defiantakesfootball.com, including our team mock draft that we just did where everybody uh, was in charge of drafting for a different team. And, of course, our live streams as well. We're right up against it, guys. The draft is around the corner. So just a few more players left to break down, and then uh, bullets are live. All right. We will see you guys very soon.